In chapter three, this is cell structure and genetic control. We will cover the plasma membrane associated structure and their function. I will also talk about the cellular diversity because we have different kind of cells in human body. They have different structure, different shape, and different size. Inside the plasma membrane of the cells, we have cytoplasm, organelles, and inclusion bodies. And we will go over them, their structure and their function, and some of the disease associated with that or component of the cells. At the end, we will talk about the center of the cells, which is control center of the cell, the nucleus. And the main function of the nucleus is to <clears throat> contain the gene and then express that gene in the form of protein, lipid, and other stuff, other uh, synthesis. So we're gonna talk about cell nucleus and gene expression, okay? If you see a typical cell here, you can see <clears throat> this is a typical cell. And by definition, cell is the basic unit of structure and function in the body. This is the structural and functional unit of the body. It's a highly organized molecular factory because it contains a lot of molecules, a lot of other structure, and they synthesize a lot of molecules like protein, fat, lipid, and other structure. It has three main components the plasma membrane, which is outer boundary of the cells. And this outer boundary is not a tough or rigid boundary. They are like the wall of the water bubble. Uh, inside that pl plasma membrane, we have cytoplasm, the liquid portion. And in the cytoplasm, we have organelles, or small organelles like mitochondria, ribosomes, rough endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, centrioles, and then other organelles. And in the center of the cells, we have the nucleus. The cell surface is the plasma membrane. This is the what structure you see when you see under microscope. And this is the structure sometimes is exposed to the body cavity, like your inner wall of your mouth, has squamous cells and there plasma membrane is exposed. You can touch plasma membrane with your finger. So this plasma membrane has several modification and two major modification of the plasma membrane is, two modifications are the cilia and the microvilli. And we will talk about that later, okay? So this is general. But not all the cells in the body are this size or this shape because different cells have different function. That's why they have different shape, different size, different structure, and they have different functions, okay? So let's see some example. Here in this diagram, you can see this size, we have some animal cells, some here, algae. Here is nerve cell stained, silver stained. Uh, here is red blood cell, donut shape with, without hole in the center. There is rod shape bacteria. And this is pollen grains magnified, okay? But here in this side, you can see the cells. First, let's, let's look at the shape. The typical shape of the cells, we saw earlier diagram, but a skin cell, you see they are flat squamous cells. Blood cells, red blood cell round, around seven micrometer. This is neutrophil, this is another monocytes. Here is bone cells. You see there are several extensions of the bone cell and in the center, there is nucleus. This is cardiac muscle cells. They are branched and attached to, each muscle cell is attached to each other. Then a skeletal muscle cells, like a tube, cylindrical structure. Column-like cells, some goblet cells. Column cells have plasma membrane infolded and they are cilia. You can see the uh, bristles like a structure brush border. That is the cilia, not cilia, sorry. Microvilli, microvilli. 
Then you see another neuron. Here is cell body, several extensions, dendrites, and the axons. Smooth muscle cell, you see both sides tapered, there is a nucleus, and then there is spindle-like structure. All the cell in the body are nucleated except mature red blood cells. All the cells have one nucleus except skeletal muscle cells, which are multinucleated, or sometimes cardiac muscle cells may have more than one nucleus. Okay. So this is the shape, different shape of the cells. There are different size of the cells. Like this red blood cell is like seven micrometer. If you get into brain and there is called a granular cell in the brain, that is around four micrometer. Your sperm is around five micrometer. Pseudo unipolar cells in the brain. Pseudo unipolar cells in the brain. Pseudo unipolar neuron. is around, if we take the length of the pseudo unipolar uh, neuron, it will be like six feet long because this part of the pseudo unipolar neuron, this is dendrites, are in your great toe. And this part is the accent terminal that is in your head, particularly in the parietal lobe of your head. So it extends from your toe to head. That's why it is like six feet long, okay? So this is a different size, shape of the cells to perform different function. That's why cellular diversity is essential in our body. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna go a different structure of the cells. So the first region of the cell is plasma membrane. This is the section of a plasma membrane. See this diagram. This surrounds and gives cell a form is selectively permeable. The membranes are three kinds, permeable, impermeable, and selectively permeable. Some membrane, biological membranes are impermeable. It allows, it does not allow anything to pass through. Some membranes are permeable. It allows everything to cross through. And some membranes are semi-permeable. That means they allow something to pass and do not allow others to permeate. Our cells plasma membrane are semi-permeable. Again, the plasma membrane is heavily made up of phospholipid. Plasma membrane is heavily made up of phospholipid. And that's why the fat soluble substance are easily passed through the plasma membrane. Whereas water soluble substance that is called polar substance has a hard time passing through this membrane, okay? So formed by a double layer of phospholipid which restricts passage of polar compound but allows non-polar compound which is lipid soluble compound easily. Let's see the structure of plasma membrane. It is made up of double layer of phospholipid. You see double layer of phospholipid. So here is the phospholipid. If you break down, you see the lollipop-like structure. You have two sticks and then you have lollipop. So the phospholipid looks like, let me draw here. So phospholipid looks like here you have two sticks and then you have a lollipop like a structure. So these sticks are the lipid. This is the lipid part, this part. And this round part is phosphate. So here is the, this is the our extracellular space and this is the intracellular space. So extracellular space has phosphate head and then lipid tail. 
intercellular space also has phosphate head and lipid tail. So lipids are like sandwiched between the phosphate, double layer of phosphate, okay? That's why we call it double layer of phospholipids or phospholipid bilayer. This is the main structure of the plasma membrane. The other structure in the plasma membranes are the the protein you see this big green protein molecule protein molecules are two types one is transmembrane protein or we call them integral protein which pass in and out of the plasma membrane. So it is running through the extracellular space to the intracellular side. Then some proteins are peripheral proteins. They are only on the surface, like here. Here is another integral protein, you see? It is passing through. Apart from protein, there is some other stuff like glycoprotein, glycolipid. In the center, there will be some cholesterol. And these all is structure. Makes the cell, there is a structure. Under the inner side of plasma membrane, there should be some cytoskeleton like microfilaments. Okay, the protein, which is transmembrane protein or integral protein acts as channel and pumps. Whereas surface protein acts as receptors, sometimes as marker. Glycolipid, glycoprotein also act as marker or receptor sometimes for the cell, okay? Protein customized membranes provide a structural support, serve as transporter, enzymes, receptor, and identity marker. So some of the proteins sometimes act as enzymes too, because they cause the <clears throat> chemical reaction in the, uh, on the cells and activate the change function of the cells. Carbohydrate in the form of glycoprotein and glycolipids are part of the outer surface. You see glycoprotein and glycolipid. They impart negative charge of the surface. So this is negative charge. That's why negatively charged material has a hard time getting inside. Can serve as, uh, serve, uh, serve as cell surface marker. So what kind of identity marker your cell has? This makes the cells specific types. Let me give you one example, like red blood cells. Some of you have A blood group, some you have B, some you have AB, some you have O blood group. Based on what kind of this glycoprotein you have on your red blood cell, that markers gives you what kind of red blood cell you have, what kind of blood group you have. Are you following me? So they act as marker. Membrane transport. So your membrane, membrane transport A, transport of small molecules. Through is like A, you can say one, Diffusion diffusion to osmosis. Osmosis. And B is transport of
large molecules. Transport of large molecules are exocytosis, or you can say phagos exocytosis, a kind is phagocytosis. phenocytosis and receptor mediated endocytosis. And then, okay, exocytosis, phagocytosis, yeah. So these are the transport. The large molecule transport is called bulk transport. Okay, so let's talk about bulk transport and then we will talk about uh, the small particles. So bulk transport is the transport of large molecules. It's a way cells move large molecules and particles across the plasma membrane. One of the transport is phagocytosis. So the, you see, this is the neutrophil and here is bacteria. Neutrophil extend its plasma membrane and extend their pseudopods and take the bacteria inside and then these two end of the pseudopods fuse, and then bacteria is taken inside the cell in the form of food vacuole. And then it keeps inside the lysosomes, and then lysosome releases its enzyme. Lysosome membrane breaks down, releases its enzyme, and digests these bacteria, kill them. That is one of the phagocytosis process. Then some cells use endocytosis to take large compound. So when, let's see, when your cell, so what is the difference between exocytosis, phagocytosis, and endocytosis? What was, let's see, can you see my hand? So this is the cell, uh, and let's see, I am the cell here, okay? And this is my plasma membrane. So what happens, I increase, the pseudopods, my hand becomes the pseudopod and I take bacteria inside. So extension of the plasma membrane. Endocytosis is just opposite. So let's see when I see any bacteria or anything, membrane invaginate inside and then take inside the uh, stuff. So some cells use endocytosis to take in large compounds. Membrane invaginates uh, to take in a vesicle of extracellular substance. And one of the process of endocytosis is pinocytosis. When a cell takes something in the form of fluid particle. So let's see if bacteria is in the fluid and then taken with the fluid, that is called pinocytosis. That's why sometimes it is called cell drinking, like phagocytosis is cell eating and pinocytosis is cell drinking, okay? Phagocytosis. is cell eating and pinocytosis is cell drinking. Okay. So another specific endocytosis is receptor mediated endocytosis. In this case, the substance can get inside the cells only when it binds with a specific receptor protein on the plasma membrane. So receptor mediated endocytosis uses receptor to take in specific compound. That means, only the substance or compound which can bind with the receptor can get inside the cells. So let's see here example. This is extracellular space. And here is the membrane of a cell. And here is in extracellular fluid, there is a virus. And you see, once this virus binds with the membrane, then membrane invaginates. And then, everything is taken inside the cells. 
even after after covid virus covid-19 virus coronavirus also binds with the receptor and then it get inside our respiratory membrane cells or epithelial cells are you following me so these covid coronavirus they first bind with our receptor and then get inside the cell and then what does virus do they take over our dna and they start making their own rna or dna like our coronavirus is rna virus they start making their own own rna and suppress the formation of our rna and they multiply multiply kill the cell and then release again outside and infect another you know, normal cells healthy cells okay so that is receptor mediated endocytosis like your cholesterol your insulin get inside your cell by this method they bind first with the receptors okay a lot of hormones first they bind with the receptor and then get inside your cell and change the function of your uh, dna this is the types of endocytosis you see extracellular fluid so here phagocytosis is forming the pseudopod and then taking and in the receptor mediated endocytosis what happened they bind with a specific receptor and then it bends clathrin protein protein is bending it and then these two ends fuse and then taken inside the lysosomes here is exocytosis on the other hand exocytosis means when a cell like here mucus cell makes the mucus and then they spit it out so once the mucus or any molecule synthesized in the cells stored in the vesicle first and those vesicles cover the molecules to be released from this membrane there is another protein molecule called vesicle snare extend and then from the membrane of the cell this is extracellular space and this is intracellular space there is another protein that is called plasma membrane is snare extends you see this is the transmembrane or integral protein when these two protein pull each other they fuse the vesicle and then ultimately release the secretion so exocytosis is exocytosis is helped by a snare protein whereas endocytosis or phagocytosis is helped by clathrin protein okay okay earlier we talked about the cellular surface cell surface has any cell has two surface two surfaces of the cells two surfaces of the cells are basal and apical apical there is sometimes other one more surface which is called vasolateral means the lateral side of the side of the two cells like if this is the cell and if i put this way and this let's say this is my this is the cell from my mouth so this is apical surface and which is inside is basal surface and if this is two cells then this surface which is attached to each cell is vasolateral surface but here we're going to talk about the surface of the cells which is extended towards the lumen or surface is called apical surface and the surface which is attached to the connective tissue inside is basal surface only apical surface of the plasma membrane of a cell can form modification and there are two modification of the plasma membrane of the apical surface of a cell and that is cilia and microvilli so let's see here that is called cellular surface or membrane specialization some epithelial cells and this is only the cells which are 
exposed to outside, whether it is body cavity or outer body cavity, okay? Some epithelial cells have cilia projecting from the surface. They are here like a structure that beat in unison. Like when you are rowing the boat, what happens? Both you are moving the rod in the same direction. Similarly, cilia is the projection of the plasma membrane. So let's see in our, in our throat, we have pseudoestratified ciliated columnar epithelium and their plasma membrane is enfolded. That is called cilia. They are long and in the center there is microtubules, okay? For example, cilia line, respiratory and reproductive tracts. So in respiratory tract, like in your trachea, it sweeps the mucus and then bring to your throat and the pharynx. Either you swallow it, usually you swallow. It goes get into your stomach and then sometime you spit it out, okay? In reproductive tract, particularly the uterine tube, there is cilia. What does that cilia do? Carry the egg from your ovary and then move with the beat towards your uterus for implantation, okay? Now, in this diagram, you can see, this is the apical surface of a cell and you see it is electron microscope. You can see the bristles like bristles like a structure. These are the cilia. And if I give a transverse section of one cilia, Let's see, let's see, this is one cilia. This is the cilia, this was the cilia and I have cut the cilia, okay? When I cut the cilia, the outer membrane of the cilia is plasma membrane. You see, this is plasma membrane. And inside the plasma membrane, I told you earlier, they are cytoskeleton called microtubules and microtubules are in the arrangement of nine plus two arrangement. So there is duplets here of microtubules, duplets here and they are nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then in the center there is another two. So we call it nine cilia contains microtubules in a nine plus two arrangement, okay? And each duplets in the periphery are attached to each other by another protein that is called dianin arm. Dianin arm, okay? So these tubules, these tubules is attached to each other by dianin arm. Let me show you. Like if I, put a tube here, this will be dining arm. Each of them are attached to each other. So dining arm, okay? What does this dining arm do? It keeps the cilia straight and helps in beating. Okay, so now, Let's go to next slide. There is a genetic disease where there is mutation of this dianin arm. And in that case, what happens? You have abnormal or no dianin arm. If you have no dianin arm and the tubules are like flat, going all over, then what happens to the cilia? Cilia will be paralyzed. Cilia will not beat in unison. It will not clean your throat, your trachea. It will not move your egg. And that condition of the disease is called Cartagener syndrome. Cartagener syndrome, you see? C-A-R-T-A, Carta, G-E-N-E-R syndrome. People suffering from this syndrome will have infertility and will have 
chronic upper respiratory tract infection and they die early. On other epithelial cells, particularly in the GI tract, on your gut, in your small intestine, the apical surface of the plasma membrane of the cells in the wall of GI tract will have enfolding of the plasma membrane, but those plasma mem membrane enfoldings are smaller and there is no microtubules. There is only microfilaments inside it. And that is called microvilli. Microvilli on, on those epithelial cells increase surface area for the epithelium and that is essential for fast absorption. Okay, so microvilli is finger-like structure that expands surface area for increased absorption. Where do you find this kind? In your GI tract, in your kidney, those are the area where you need absorption in particularly at secretion. Okay, now we're gonna talk about cytoplasm and organelles. So, Cytoplasm is the jelly-like matrix within a cell, consists of fluid-like cytosol uh, plus organelles. And cyto uh, skeleton is a lattice work of microfilaments and microtubules filling the cytoplasm. So inside the cells, there are several organelles, but one organelle, which we're gonna talk at the beginning, these are like skeleton bones inside the cells. They give the track inside the cell where all organelles can move inside the cells. Okay. Uh, so that's why cytoskeleton is a lattice work of microfilaments and microtubules in the cyto uh, cytoplasm. Gives cell its shape in its structure and forms track upon which things are transported around the cells. And there are three major cytoskeletons. What are they? They are microtubules, microfilaments and intermediate filaments. Okay. Can you repeat the last one? Microtubules, microfilaments and intermediate filaments. I-N-T-E-R-M-E-D-I-A-T, intermediate filaments. Now let's talk about the organelles. The organelles, first organelle, let me talk about all the organelles first here. Let's see. We have the mitochondria, ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, centrioles, lysosomes, perioxisomes. So lysosomes, are vesicles like organelles containing digestive enzyme and matter being digested. So lysosomes contains hydrolytic enzymes, all the hydrolytic enzymes. And you know, enzymes are acidic in nature. So they are uh, covered by membrane and it is stored only inside the membrane. Lysosome cannot be spread all over the cytoplasm in the cell, otherwise, this enzyme can kill all organelles. So it is always kept inside the vesicle. These enzymes, so let's see when by phagocytosis cell takes bacteria, then bacteria comes to the, get inside the lysosomes vesicle, fuse with it and then digest it. That's why lysosomes involve in recycling cell component. Our, all organelles get older, they die, and then we make new organelles all the time. So those old nascent organelles then uh, are digested inside the lysosomes. When your cell becomes old, let's see whole cell becomes old, then what happens? This lysosomes, now old cells you don't want, they need to die. Like we get old and we have to die. So once cell get old, then lysosome release some enzyme and then enzyme reach the nucleus and breaks down the nucleus first. And then if there is no nucleus, then what happens? Cell from this side, it starts shrinking. And then slowly that shrink, small, tiny 
shrink 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 of the cell is taken by another cell and eaten up that shrinking of the old cells geriatric cell is called programmed cell death that's why uh, lysosomes involved in programmed cell death which is also called apoptosis a p p o p t o s i s apoptosis this is the normal process going on in our cell all the time okay cells also recycle the uh, the, the lysosome also recycle the cellular products or other old structures lysosome contains almost 400 enzymes and sometimes you know all the enzymes are all the enzymes are protein fat or carbohydrate all the enzymes in our body are protein or fat or carb proteins proteins okay so if there is any genetic mutation and you have lack of certain enzymes then your lysosome will not break down that particular component and one of the disease associated with that is called tay-sachs disease where there is lack of the certain lysosomes enzymes and this disease affects your brain cells because it does not brain cells have lacking that enzymes which fails to break down the lipids in the brain cells are you following me okay another group of uh, enzymes contained in the vesicle is peroxisomes okay peroxisomes are membrane wall sacs of oxidase enzymes what does this peroxisomes do they take a hydrogen atom from some molecules and then form hydrogen peroxide okay at the same time the hydrogen peroxide then kills other bacteria other components but you don't want more hydrogen peroxide because it is toxic in the cells then we have another enzyme inside the peroxide um, uh, peroxisomes which neutralizes the hydrogen peroxide that's why i have written here some peroxisomes produce hydrogen peroxide which is neutralized by enzyme catalase which is one of the enzyme found in the peroxisomes so peroxisomes are the vesicles inside the cells which contains oxidase enzyme oxidase enzyme and this oxidase enzyme neutralize free radicals and break down poisons break down long fatty acid and fatty chains and that's why this kind of enzymes you need a lot in the cells like kidney cells liver cells those cells you need a lot of these enzymes because liver detoxify all the toxin alcohol kidney cell detoxify a lot of drugs and other stuff okay next organelle is mitochondria uh some facts about mitochondria scientists believe mitochondria somehow in our ancestor moved as a bacteria and got inside our cell and lived there permanently as symbiotic relationship means bacteria got inside the cell and start making atp for our cells and then we live our cell live together and that's how it become permanent resident inside the cell uh mitochondria are energy producing organelle this is the only organelle which has double membrane you can see here outer membrane and the inner membrane the enfolding of the inner membrane is called crista this is the crista where atp is made by oxidation of the fatty acid or glucose all cells in the body have mitochondria except mature red blood cells 
mitochondria contains its own DNA, which is called mitochondrial DNA. That's why mitochondria divide and increase in number a lot. So let's see, you are not exercising regularly. All of a sudden you started exercising, then your skeletal muscle will making will divide its mitochondria and make more mitochondria for, to, for making more ATP. Mitochondria, mitochondrial DNA, you inherit from your mother, not from your father. So soul DNA in your mitochondria is from your mother, not from your dad. Do you know why? Because when egg and a sperm fuse together, the tail of the sperm contains mitochondria and head contains DNA. So only head get inside the egg, tail remains outside. That's why all the mitochondria remain outside, but egg contains DNA as well as other organelles and mitochondria. That's why you keep mother's DNA from the mitochondria, not the dad's. That's why this is good news and bad news. If your mother has any disease associated with mitochondria, you will get it. And if your mother is healthy mitochondrially, then you will be healthy too. Okay, now next organelle is ribosomes. Ribosomes sometimes, it's called ribosomes, ribozymes, like enzymes. Sometimes it is called ribozyme. Ribozyme, like an enzyme. So ribosomes are protein factories. They make protein, you see? Where cells, uh, proteins are synthesized. Ribosomes are made up of two subunits, small subunit and large subunit. The subunits are the units. This is a smaller is called 30 subunit and this is called 50 subunits and some protein molecules, okay? They are composed of RNA and some protein molecules. RNA found in the ribosomes are ribosomal RNA, okay? When these two units are separate, they are non-functional. When they bind, that's the time it synthesizes protein. And we're gonna talk about steps of protein synthesis. Another organ is endoplasmic reticulum ER. ER are system of membranes specialized for synthesis of or degradation of molecules. There are two kinds of ER. By the way, ribosomes, you can find ribosomes in the cytoplasm or attached to the yeah. endoplasmic reticulum. So if it is, if ribosomes are attached to the ER, then we call it rough ER or granular ER. If it is not, then we call it smooth ER, a granular ER. The inner membrane of the ER is attached to the outer membrane of nuclear membrane, okay? Rough ER makes protein, whereas a smooth ER makes lipid, cholesterol, steroid, and other hormones. And it also inactivate the hormones and steroids. A smooth ER in skeletal muscle stores calcium for the muscle contraction, okay? Another organ in is Golgi complex. Golgi complex are found in the outer region of the cells here. <coughs> Golgi complex is a stack of flattened sacs. OK. 
can see these are the stacks so when er and ribosomes synthesize protein the vesicle containing protein enter from er to the golgi complex and then here it is processed and form vesicles and those vesicles then transported to their destination so this vesicle is transported in three location number 1 some protein is stored as enzyme in the lysosomes some protein used as membrane repair and some stuff is transported outside in the form of secretion by exocytosis okay now let's talk about the nucleus nucleus is like cell within a cell so you see there is a nucleus it has a double membrane and the inner membrane and outer membrane together these two membranes are called nuclear envelope in several junction you see here the junction these two envelopes are connected to each other by a protein called connection protein connection protein and that forms the nuclear pore or pore complex and that's how nucleus communicate with extra nuclear space in the cytoplasm in the center of the nucleus you have a nucleolus in several location inside the nucleus you can see some dark area that is called chromatin chromatin is made up of the chromosomes the dna and some histone protein okay this dark area chromatin contains dna so nucleus contains cells dna enclosed by double membrane we talked about it now nuclear complex let's talk about the protein synthesis so what is the function of the nucleus nucleus contains dna dna directs the protein synthesis because this is the structure where you have code for every molecule your cell makes so at first this nucleolus makes r rna r r n a that means ribosomal rna and then that ribosomal rna through the active active process comes out and then participate in protein synthesis then some rna synthesized taking the code from the dna here in the chromatin and takes the message from dna and becomes messenger rna and then by active process that also comes outside some rna becomes transfer rna and they transfer code from dna to messenger rna and they also transfer the amino acid later for protein synthesis okay so those are the types of rna so the main function of the nucleus is expressing the gene so gene expression is the function of dna from the nucleus so genes are length of dna that codes for synthesis of rna and then messenger rna from your nucleus carries info for how to make protein that is transported out of the nucleus to ribosome where protein are made so let's see here the gene is ex uh, expressed in two processes that is called transcription and translation transcription where occurs when the dna sequence in the chromatin is turned into messenger rna sequence and then this messenger rna comes outside 
on the ribosomes and then decode it with the help of transfer RNA and bring amino acid and make chain of protein that is translation. So translation occurs when messenger RNA sequence is used to make a protein. Each nucleus contain one or more dark area called nuclei. Uh, we talked about this one. So you see here, you have a nucleus here, then you text the messenger RNA and then bring put here in between these two subunits. So here, this is the endoplasmic reticulum. Here is ribosomes. And then messenger RNA is coming here in between two subunit and signal sequences is started here when it binds to the receptor. Then you see amino acid is transported, chains are made. Once the optimum length, length is made, then signal sequence is removed and then release glycoprotein or protein forms the vesicle inside the rough endoplasmic reticulum, then transported to the uh, Golgi complex where it is processed and packaged and then sent wherever it needs to send. That is all about the cells today. So we talked about the general structure of the cells, then three major regions of the cells, and we talked about cell transport, we talked about cell diversity and all the organelles and their functions. Okay, thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Uh, Professor, when will this be uploaded? Uh, once it available, it takes time to from the Zoom to available. Thank I you, Professor. Maybe tonight or tomorrow. Mm -hmm.